Welcome, everybody. It's time to grab your board and catch a wave as we ride the sales pipeline with your host, Matt Hines. Hey, Matt. Hey, Paul. How are we doing? I'm doing good today. It's sunny today in Southern California. The rains have passed. The sun has come out, and life looks good again. Uh, I'm glad things are back to normal. I'm glad you're not worried about having to step outside and melt into the into the pavement. <laughs> really? Uh, it's not good. Well, I'll tell you, it's um, we're we're, uh, we're here. The last episode of Sales Pipeline Radio for January. Uh, I was on a call right before we uh, head in the studio here, and uh, someone started the call with saying uh, "Happy New Year," and I'm like, "It's it's getting a little long in the tooth." For yeah, that. And, really. Uh, you know, my my criteria has always been if if I haven't talked to you yet. And or it's uh, before the Super Bowl. I think Happy New Year is still okay to say. I think we can still we can still use that uh, moving forward. But I uh, we'll appreciate everyone joining us here today. Uh, as usual, we are uh, doing Sales Pipeline Radio live uh, every Thursday at two thirty Eastern, eleven thirty Pacific. For those of you listening on demand uh, on the podcast version. Uh, available through iTunes and Google Play. Thanks very much for joining us. Every week we are featuring leaders in the sales and marketing world, thought leaders, authors, speakers, and uh, as much as we can doing people that are doing the hard work, that are building the products and selling the products and marketing the products that we're using and buying on a daily basis to learn what's working in terms of building and managing and closing sales pipelines. And today uh, we got a very, very special treat. Very excited to have someone who is uh, who is a celebrity in the B2B marketing world, Paul. Like uh, oftentimes there's people that are impressive and important but not not, not a household name in B2B sales and marketing. And today's, uh, I'm probably, I'm probably embarrassing him already, but today's guest, uh, is the co-founder of Marketo and is the founder of Engageo, uh, the next generation of marketing and, uh, and sales tools. Very excited to have John Miller with us here today. John, thanks again so much for joining us. How's it going, Matt? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Thanks again. Um, I mean, you, I mean, I, I hopefully didn't build you up too much and, but <laughs> I think, I, I, but honestly, I mean, you think about where you've been, right? I mean, you were, you were instrumental in the growth of Epiphany back in the day, which, which when it, when it launched, uh, it was, uh, it was a bit ahead of its time. I mean, you know, Marketo is when you and Phil and the team launched Marketo. I mean, it was also something that people didn't really understand. It is now it has become not only it, the category has become table stakes in the industry, but, you know, Marketo has become the leader in that space. And, and now what you're doing with Engageo and really sort of building uh, you know, building from the ground up uh, a new platform that is account focused versus lead and contact focus uh, is pretty interesting. I mean, how do how do you think about? I'm curious how you think about your career. Has this been intentional? Is this serendipitous? Are you just lucky? Is it a mix of that? Like, how do you think about that? Yeah, well, you know, I, I first got to say, definitely not a household name. At least, you know, <laughs> as, I, as I as I tell my wife, my wife, I'm sort of moderately famous in like very small circles who go to certain trade shows, uh, <laughs> but but that's about it. You know, I think my whole career has been in marketing technology, and this is actually my fourth marketing technology company. You know, not far out of undergrad, I ended up where a company called Exchange Partners that spun out a marketing technology called Exchange. That was the leading marketing technology of the mid-90s. You know, from there, I went to business school, and after business school, as you said, I was at Epiphany, the leading marketing technology of the next generation during the Internet bubble. You know, when Phil and I left Epiphany, that's when we started Marketo, which is probably the leading marketing technology of the last 10 years. And so, yeah, absolutely, you know, Engageo is sort of the, the obvious next step. And, you know, I fully hope and intend that Engageo is the, you know, leading marketing and sales technology of the next 10 years. The common theme throughout all of this is I've been pursuing a, a dream or the vision of the one-to-one future. You know, that the book, The One-to-One Future, came out in 1993, you know, Don Peppers and Martha Rogers. And it described, you know, a world where we're able to deliver the same personalization and relevance that, you know, people did at the corner store in the 1800s, but deliver that level of personalization at scale using... Uh, data and, and analytics and new new techniques. Um, that's that's inspired me. That's been the theme through all these companies. And I think with the, each generation, we're getting closer and closer to that vision. So you mentioned sort of these small circles of people uh, that, that see each other at conferences where you're semi-famous, and one of those circles is for sure the sort of account-based marketing circle that is certainly growing uh, and been around at least for the last couple of years. When did you see the wave of account-based coming? I mean, I, I think. 
Oh, you, you, you know, you, 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 we can argue about your, your fame, but I mean, you do seem to see some trends before a lot of other people see them. When did you start to see that the lead based marketing was not going to be sufficient? And at what point did you start to think that account based was a better direction, uh, for marketers and salespeople to better work together? Sure. If I really go the earliest possible time, 2012, we're at Marketo. Mm-hmm. So the year before the IPO. And we're looking to scale as fast as possible. And my CFO comes to me and says, you know, John, like you can have more budget, you know, to, to grow faster, but we need, you know, we want more, we want even more pipeline. How can you get more pipeline? And the problem was we got 80% of our pipeline through inbound channels, you know, through content and through other kind of what I call net phishing tactics. And as you know, you know, Doubling the amount of blog posts isn't going to double the number of leads you generate. And I, so we had to find new techniques. We had, you know, out, you know, kind of ultimately and start to build an outbound engine. And that's where I started using this analogy of it's not fishing with net, it's fishing with spears where you have named accounts and, you know, that you need to go after them. So, you know, I started thinking about outbound back then, but the problem is then fast forward a few years, at least at Marketo, the word account-based marketing was all mergled up with the concept of um, web personalization and mm-hmm. account-based advertising because that's what tools like Demandbase did and that's what tools like Inside Era did, which is the product that that you know, Marketo acquired. So I was sort of – you know, a big believer in spear phishing, but I kind of was a naysayer on the word account based marketing because I didn't think that was strategic. And it was actually in late 2014 when I was having lunch with Maria Pergolino, who you know, she runs marketing over at Aptis. I was thinking about, you know, starting my next business and Maria said, you should do a platform for account based marketing because, you know, she just, I'm trying to do X. And what she described was spear phishing. She said, I'm trying to do this and I just can't do it. It's too hard to do it with just Marketo. And, and, and then sort of that was the genesis of me seeing that there's an opportunity for a new kind of platform, a new kind of marketing automation platform that had account centricity at its core. So, so Marie, those two things together. Yeah, and Maria, if you're listening, uh, one of two things: either you don't have enough uh, stock in in, Ele- in uh, Engageo, given that you're basically the the uh, you were the impetus to create it, or Maria, this is all your fault. And I think it, what's it, a lot of people try to do ABM are still struggling with that, John. Too. I mean, they're they're trying to figure out what does it mean and how do they execute on it. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people describe account based marketing as simply, well, let's choose the companies we want to market to and just market to them. And it's way more complicated than that. I think, you know, CEB talks about the number of people inside buying organizations and they talk about this buying committee of on average 6.8 people now. To me, like that's the real, that's the rub and that's where tools like Engageo really help. It's not just targeting the right company, but it's coordinating communication and consensus building among the right people within those companies. Is that, did I get that right? Well said. I mean, I like to talk about team selling. Right. You know, in, in, in sort of the broadest sense of the word, you know, a most too much marketing and too much prospecting today, I think is sort of one person to one person. Right. Whether it's one SDR calling one person at the company or one marketer sending an email to one person at the company. And then what happens is you end up sending one email to eight different people at the company, but you're basically sending all eight people the same email. Right. And that's not really being account centric. Team selling is, first of all, recognizing that there are multiple people at the target account, 6.8, as you just said, and they have different needs and different business issues and different things that are driving them. But what's good is you also have multiple people at your account, right? You're not one lone marketer or one lone sales development rep. You've got marketing and sales development, and you have the account executives. You have your own executives, I guarantee you an email from your CEO to their CEO will get a way better response rate than an email from your SDR to their CEO. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's about orchestrating all those interactions between your team and their team so that you can move the ball forward. 
Talking today on Sales Pipeline Radio with John Miller, the co-founder of Marketo and the founder of Engageo, uh, which has become the leading platform for account-based marketing. You can find it at Engageo.com, E-N-G-A-G-I-O.com. And, you know, you're, you're talking as much as you describe how sort of account-based really works. You're talking as much about sales as you are about marketing. And it's one of my base concerns really about ABM is that it's really a, it's, it's centered around marketing. I've heard some people say account-based everything and that feels too broad. I, I really like the way Trish Bertuzzi at the Bridge Group describes it. She calls it account-based revenue. But no matter what you call it, I think, you know, what you're describing really is fundamentally a far more coordinated, integrated effort. You know, not just between sales and marketing, but coordinating the entire internal company, the entire selling company to deploy the right comment, you know, right conversations at the right time from the right people to the right people to move those deals forward better. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, sales and marketing alignment has been sort of you know, this thing that people paid lip service to for years. Uh, and, and the reality is, as much as we, at Marketo, we talked about sales and marketing alignment, I think the product we built made it harder. You know, because we were this lead centric system that, you know, was marketing hanging out over there and sales you hang out over there. What I'm trying to do with Engage you really is, you know, to, to let those teams work together well, you know, and that's, that's what everybody wants. It's just been really, really hard. So how's it feel to be back in the weeds? I mean, like, you know, you, you've been an, you've been an operational marketer for a long time. Uh, even as, you know, Marketo grew, I mean, you were really leading an awful lot of the marketing efforts and strategy there. But, you know, once it goes public, it becomes a very different company. You go back to starting something from scratch and, uh, scrapping things together and hiring people and looking for office space. Uh, you know, what's that, what that's like? Is that, is that something you enjoy? Is, are you looking forward to the next stage? Oh, no, I love it. I love it. You've probably heard about people talk about Dunbar's number, you know, the sort of who does research that says, you know, as companies get above 150 employees, you know, it becomes impossible for everybody to know everybody and to coordination becomes hard. Mm -hmm. And you start spending a lot more time of your time and energy coordinating instead of doing. Yeah. Well, I, I love this small stage because I'm doing everything I can to grow out of the small and get big. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we're, uh, I got a lot more I want to ask you about ABM, but, you know, before we head into commercial here, you know, what are some of the things that you've, I guess, learned over the years? You know, as a business leader and now as a founder, you know, what, are, you, know, you know, without giving away secret sauce, you know, what are some either mistakes or lessons that you learned from past companies that you're applying now at Engageo? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, Marketo is a pretty awesome company. We had a great yeah. product. Uh, we hired great people, but something that Phil and I never spent enough time on was talking about the culture that we wanted to have, the kind of company we wanted to have, right? We talked about product. We just, we didn't talk about the company. And so that's the biggest lesson I've taken forward into Engageo is the biggest area I spend my time on is, you know, really building the company. How do we communicate? How do we talk to each other? How do we work together? Um, you know, Matt, you recommended a product, uh, called Tiny Pulse to us that we absolutely love. You know, just as a way to really understand what's happening at the company and ensure communication. So that's the area where we're really focusing. That's it, great. Yeah, where I'm focusing is, is the company building, not just the product building. No, it's great to hear, and, and I can tell you, I don't know if you get this feedback, but, you know, knowing a lot of people that, you know, work at Engageo now, you know, they talk a lot about that. They talk about how much you talk about it. They talk about how much of a focus it is at the company and how, how important they find that focus as well. Not only is it is a forcing function, is a motivating function, it just, uh, it's definitely coming through, and I couldn't agree more. We're going to take a quick break, pay some bills. Uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes. We've got a lot more with John Miller, uh, who's the founder of Engageo. We're going to talk, I want to talk more about culture, but talk about culture as it relates to making shifts to things like account-based marketing, a better coordinating sales and marketing, and uh, what ABM means for the rest of the marketing work we're doing. We'll be back in just a couple seconds. This has been Sales Pipeline Radio. In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity, for a blueprint, for a guide to what's really working. And how about a way to apply it specifically today to increase Sales pipeline growth, velocity, and most of all, conversion. That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. And amazingly, you can download it for free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds, H-E-I-N-Z-M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G. It encompasses the entire sales and marketing cycle, but in quick bursts with lots of specific, actionable ideas, strategies, tactics you can put to work right away. Like today, 
the loaded table of contents helps you narrow in and tackle a problem. And it's something you can come back to over and over again as a reference guide. Why not download your free copy of the Modern Marketer's Field Guide? It's free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds. H-E-I-N-Z, marketing.com. All right, let's pick it back up with Matt and his guest. Thank you, Paul. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio. If you like what you're hearing from John, you want to listen again, pick up some more tips, or share this with other people in your office, you can definitely do it via the podcast feed at iTunes and Google Play. If you want any of our past episodes on demand, whenever you want it, middle of the night, in the morning, during a run, whatever you want, you can get them at salespipelineradio.com anytime. John's will be up there in a couple of days, and every one of our past episodes up there right now. Speaking of episodes, coming up the next couple of weeks, uh, next week, the first episode of February, we're going to feature David Premer. I'm probably pronouncing his last name right, but no, but he is the vice president of sales at Influitive. We're going to be talking about the sales side of the complex sale, how to manage that and how to work with marketing in a coordinated way. We'll definitely be covering some ABM issues there as well. Week after that, we've got Ron Brock, who is the author of the book Game Breaker. It is full of great advice on the qualities of superior salesmen salespeople, how to acquire them, how to build them, how to train them and scale them in your business. We want to continue here today with John Miller, who is the co-founder of Marketo, who uh, is the uh, self-described semi-famous in very small circles of people. Uh, at least that's how he describes it to his wife. Like I, Beth, every once in a while, my wife, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll show her somewhere I got published and she say, yeah, you're such a big deal. Go take out the trash, right? So anything you do to keep <laughs> us, uh, keep us humble, it works for me. But I want to talk a little more about culture. You know, you talked about how important that is for you as you build Engage you, and as you sort of set a foundation, uh, and create a precedent for the kind of business Engage you is going to be. Um, let's talk about culture from the from the standpoint of making ABM account based marketing or account based revenue work internally. How you know, how do you encourage people to make the shift? I mean, in many companies, especially larger companies, you've got um, animosity between sales and marketing. Uh, you've got a marketing team that may have historically acted like the arts and crafts department. And so getting people to orient around the account, getting people to drive better integration with the sales organization isn't always easy. And I'm sure that in your sales process, you face some of that as well. What are you, what are you doing to help encourage people or what do you recommend people do to, to make the right internal moves to be more successful with something like engage you in ABM? The answer to that depends a lot on uh, if you're talking to the marketing team or you're talking to the sales or sales development team. Mm-hmm. You know, cause I think that they, they approach it differently. You know, if you're talking to the marketing team, I think the reality is, is they have the easiest time kind of, you know, pivoting here because they want to do the right thing for the sales team. And you know, usually, if marketing does it right, you know, instead of saying, hey, we have leads, why aren't you following up on our leads? You know, to, to, to pivot the conversation with sales and say, we understand you want to go after accounts. Let's work to, let's, let, you know, help me understand who those accounts and let's talk about how we're going to help you go after them. Sales usually really actually enjoys that conversation. Right. The mistake marketers make will be is, is hey, you know, let me know what accounts you want to go after and then tell me what you want me to do. <laughs> Right. Because sales doesn't know what marketing can do. If you kind of leave it so open ended, you know, they're going to say, well, can you have a dinner? Can you put together a dinner? Right. You know, or something. Cause, cause that's all they know. Right. You know, so the, it, it, you got to come to them like, here's things we can do. Here's how we can help. You know, we can do this research for you. We can customize that and so on. Anyway, so the point is, rel- it's a little easier from the marketing side to kind of in- embrace being account centric. So here's the other thing. Uh, go, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, well, so I think, you know, the bigger challenge I think I'm seeing is more on the, um, sales and sales development side. You know, the, you know, I, th- you know, too often, I mean, and the, and the challenge really is, is that sales development as a function, I think still is living in a world where they're, um, all about measuring activity. You know, how many calls did you make? How many dials did you make? You know, oh, you're not getting enough, you know, connects. Let me see your email template. You know, and it's, 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 it's a very tactical volume based thing that I think really embracing a world of account based everything is a world where sales development actually needs to step up and be a little bit more strategic. You know, spend a little more time thinking about what's going to be a message that will actually connect with an executive at this target account, you know, bringing them business insight. You know, that's harder. And, you know, I, so, so, so my point is that that's, it's a bigger change, I think, for the sales development team usually, you know, because 
less volume, more research, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. The, the last thing I'll say is, you know, so so you know, our strategy for that little bit is, you know, to Trojan horse. You know, if we, you know, if we start just by giving them a solution that just lets them, you know, do what they want to do, but better and faster and easier, you know, then we, our foot's in the door and then we can like, all right, hey, as long as you're sending that out, you know, what if you like spend a little more time customizing that, that email to make it better? Oh, okay. That seems like a good idea. You know, and you can kind of, you know, smooth it in that way. Mm. No, good insights, and I love that you're covering a lot of different areas. I mean, look, this isn't uh, always the most, the easiest uh, path to navigate, uh, and these aren't things that you're going to change just by sitting people down and walking them through it. And I, I've found that even within marketing's own organization, there can be friction here. And you've got people that their jobs historically have been very lead driven. You know, getting more volume up and to the right. You change that, you change what you're measuring, and some people might start to worry about their job. I've literally heard some digital marketing people say, well, that's all fine and good, but I'm not willing to increase my cost per lead. Well, the the cost per Facebook registration may not really be the metric that matters. So do you see that? Do you see people you know, fighting or sort of you know, trying to create culture change within their own marketing organization as well? Oh, hell, yeah. I mean, so and, – and, and, and to put it another way, that's the biggest mistake I think people make. Right is is they embark on some sort of account based journey without changing how their organization is going to be measuring them. If let's say you're in marketing and you're going to start doing account based marketing, you know if if everyone is just measuring you on how many leads you generated, you're going to run into a buzzsaw. By definition, the quality goes up as the quantity goes down. Yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit about how the MABM fits into the broader marketing mix. I mean, this I assume this isn't all or nothing. I mean, I feel like every time there's a shiny new object in marketing, we all gravitate towards it, and we think it might be the silver bullet. You know, 15 years ago, it was banner ads. You know, four years ago, it was social selling. Last year, it was account-based marketing. But I think what people realize once they get past sort of the newness of it is this really is something that it may shift part of your approach, but it doesn't replace everything else you're doing in marketing. So, you know, curious, how do you see ABM integrating with other marketing projects? priorities uh, moving forward really good question right i think at the i think ultimately you know what marketers are starting to realize is that we're not in a one-size-fits-all world you know and now and, and to explain that you know we sort of always understood that b2b looks different from b2c right and like b2c marketers well they can do ad they do display ads and tv ads and broad brand building things and that's how you drive marketing if you're selling you know sugar soda mm-hmm. right and, and and we sort of get that b2b is different you know but you know partly because you know marketo and and you know the other demand generation vendors i think we spent the last 10 years thinking that b2b was monolithic you know, it was like, oh, the way you do B2B is you generate leads and then you nurture them and then you score them and then you move on down the road. And we almost, you know, it was almost this perception that, that it's all net fishing. And I think what we're starting to realize is like, no, there's nuances and there's another way you can actually think about going to market that's more appropriate when you go after big fish. You know, and, 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 and you have this whole kind of third style, if you will. Mm-hmm. Right, so you might have your consumer style, you know, you might have your net fishing style, and now you have your spear fishing style, and that that you know, you know, they they all have a place depending on your kind of business, you know, if you will. So that's why I'm very bullish that account based marketing and just account based everything is not a fad. It's not just like oh hey, content marketing was like the hottest thing or predictive marketing was the hottest thing. You know, I think that that, that account-based everything is a more fundamental uh, view on go-to-market that that is appropriate for a set of businesses. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think, you know, to your point about, you know, not, you know, finding a one-size-fits-all, I think even within ABM, that's true. I mean, so someone at a conference a couple months ago asked me, you know, what what qualifies as someone that's ABM worthy? What, you know, what, what makes an account someone you can do ABM with? And my answer was a couple fold. I said, one, if there's more than one person making the decision internally, it's a candidate for ABM. Uh, the, 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 the minimal 
tech stack for ABM, with all due respect to Engage, it really is just the telephone, right? I mean, just, you know, having different messages that you can deliver to people um, allows you to do an account orientation to marketing. Almost impossible to scale that if you really want to build a business uh, and, and sort of build your own pipeline with ABM, which is why tools like Engage are important. But then the way you would approach that is different. The way you would sell to an enterprise company versus, a, you know, an SMB company, you know, doing an account orientation, building consensus inside the company, uh, it's different. But you just you have to understand the economics of the sale and what's important to, from an acquisition cost standpoint as well, and adjust how you're executing appropriately. Yeah, totally agree with that. Cool. All right. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time as we have, it usually happens about five minutes at the top of the hour. But uh, <laughs> appreciate everyone joining us today. Really appreciate John Miller for joining us today, sharing some great insights on account based. And uh, John, again, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for your insights. Great to talk to you as always. All right. If you want to hear more from John, uh, you can certainly check him out online. He is a prolific blogger, tweeter. You can find him at, at John Miller, J-O-N Miller. Definitely encourage you to check out Engageo, his great new company, doing some amazing things. They publish some great content as well at Engageo.com. We will have links to all of that as well as a replay of this uh, episode on SalesPipelineRadio.com. You can catch it at the podcast. And uh, look forward to catching you live again next week. It's going to be 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, as usual, every Thursday. And uh, look forward to it as we start February and get further into the year. Uh, for my great producer, Paul, our guests, all our listeners, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for listening. Sales Pipeline. You've been listening to Sales Pipeline Radio, the only place that looks at how to build a sales pipeline and sustain it over time. Matt Hines from Hines Marketing.